celebrated from July 1 to 31st by IP India as a part of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. On this occasion, it is my great privilege to welcome our correspondent, Thiru L. Palamale, AAS Retired, Principal Dr. S. Sri Devi, Vice Principal Dr. Quincy Asha Das, Deans, Heads of the Departments, Faculty and Students to this talk. We have with us today Dr. T. Pavan Kumar, currently working as Senior Scientist in the Department of Research and Development, Planning and Business Development at CSIR Institute of Minerals and Materials Technology, Bhubaneswar, India. He is a well-wisher of our college and was instrumental in organizing several knowledge sharing programs along with us under the Maitri scheme. Dr. T. Pavan Kumar obtained his B.Sc. Chemistry in 2002 with College First and M.Sc. Organic Chemistry in 2004 from Osmania University, Hyderabad and secured University First with four gold medals. He pursued his Ph.D. work in Chemistry at CSIR IICT as CSIR JRF SRF and received PhD degree from Osmania University, Hyderabad in 2011. Following his PhD, he worked for an IP company for about two years and then got selected for Inspired Faculty Award from the Department of Science and Technology in 2012. He again worked at CSIR IICT Hyderabad as Inspired Faculty and Assistant Professor for about five years. He holds a postgraduate diploma in patents law from Nalsir Hyderabad and several certifications from World Intellectual Property Organization. He was a visiting fellow at NDSU USA in 2015 and also associated with NDRC New Delhi as manager IP and training for short stint in 2016-17. Before joining CSIR IMMT, he was an assistant professor at Puducherry. His research interests include organic chemistry, asymmetric synthesis, process chemistry, medicinal chemistry, small molecules, green chemistry, and he has vast experience in intellectual property pat rights, especially patents. And he has about 18 patents to his credit. We are greatly privileged to have you with us today, sir. And now I hand over the session to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate your efforts. Uh, firstly, I congratulate the entire team of uh, CTT College uh, for Women uh, in joining hands with IMMT uh, during, uh, during this festival season of National Intellectual Property or uh, uh, Rashtri Baudhik Sampada Mahotsav. And you are the very first few colleges who have readily agreed uh, our request to be part of this program. And personally, I also thank you very much because you have taken all the efforts in making this program to happen. So, and also I appreciate your uh, students, faculties and, the, and others who are joining hands to be part of this program. So without wasting much of the time, I'll just share my screen. Maybe I'll switch off my video to avoid any sort of technical glitch and then I'll be sharing the screen. Hope the screen is visible. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. So here, to, uh, today I'll be talking to you on innovation and IPR, the synergy. We all know that so many new things are happening around. Uh, maybe year to year, decade to decade, so much of advancement is taking place. And in some select areas, these advancements are uh, with such a speed that by the time we get to know with the existing things, some new technologies are already coming into the market. So therefore, all these advancements are taking place because of innovation. And wherever a innovation happens, either directly or indirectly, IP plays a significant role. So therefore, here today, in our session, we look into the aspects on how to contribute towards innovation, in what way IP is essential in building our innovations and then strengthening our portfolio as well as gaining profits. So here is some outcome uh, from my 
practice of patents as well as research unless you integrate uh, ip learning with your academic or research practices uh, we may not be really contributing to some potential ips so therefore whenever you think of performing some activity maybe a research activity or maybe academic activity or any other work the outcome would be any of these three a discovery or a invention or a innovation discovery is something which is already there in the nature but maybe you are the first person to show it to the world for the first time invention and innovation are like two sides of the coin invention and innovation they always goes with problem solution approach if you find a solution to the problem that you are facing if that solution is the very first solution then it is invention if you improve upon the solutions then it is innovation and in broader sense people refer creativity as the thinking part of activity innovation is all about doing and many of us might feel that today we are in very very advanced stage yes there is no doubt in that but we should also realize that at in each and every era people were at the advancement of those times so therefore technology and innovation is like a never ending spiral technology and innovation were there earlier they are there now tomorrow also they will be going to be there all the time as long as human life survives or exists on this planet technology and innovation will always be there in one or other fashion if you try to recollect look back into our evolution or civilization process this is how we started and slowly we made progress towards more and more advancements so i can refer it as wheels to vehicles it started with the invention of the wheel then we are in the era of vehicles so many advanced vehicles are there even if you take the example of wheel now no one will go with this primitive wheel people are fond of geared wheels powered wheels alloy wheels so many others so all these are the improvements or the advancements that have been taken place and here is an outline of history of the cell phone before 1970 there were no mobile phones at all then slowly it started and in early stages please look into the size of the mobile phone or cell phone so they, they were very heavy very big and slowly size started reducing they become they started becoming smart smart slim then now the fully sl uh, ultra slim models are there smartphones are there so all this is attested to innovation and at each and every phase of this innovation cycle ip also plays a significant role so therefore we can say that it is the human who can create and think or who can think and create human being is like any other creature created by the nature but with some difference that is we have brain or mind or thought process we don't know whether other other creatures are having or not but we are with advanced level of thinking or thought process and that is where we get a, an advantage over the other creatures on this nature existing on the planet or created by the nature and many a times we also feel that some community is very intelligent some group is very intelligent some people are very genius believe me we have gifted with equal kind of equal kind of ability creativity whether we use it or not whether we realize it or not whether we tap it or not it all depends on us so each one of us is a born inventor generally a human mind thinks or generates about 60000 to 80000 thoughts per day you me he she whoever it may be everyone is capable of generating these many thoughts 
sometimes you might be knowing sometimes we you may not be knowing but yes we do generate these many thoughts but unfortunately 95% of those thoughts are repetitive in nature same old thoughts we keep getting very few of those thoughts are having some potential only people or the organizations or the societies or the nations at large which could realize the value of those potential thoughts have emerged as powerful superpowers or advanced or developed see if there are if you look into the world worldwide statistics there are about 10 to 15 countries which are called as developed nations or superpowers more than 190 countries are not superpowers why the reason is the same they could realize the value of their ideas they could realize the value of their creativity they could tap them and we could not realize the same so therefore whenever you feel that your idea is valuable it has got some potential you should definitely own it otherwise someone else will do the same and in our regular practices we always are fond of generating ideas and we feel that we are so great because we have so many ideas but believe me just having ideas do not bring us anything you might be having 1 lakh ideas 2 lakhs ideas or 1 crores of ideas but unless you put them into practice no impact is going to happen so therefore just don't keep your ideas as ideas try to work on them convert them into useful applications do some productive activity and contribute to something different in this era which is referred as era of innovations many people still say that we are in the knowledge era knowledge era has already gone now we are into the era of innovations or innovative era and here is the cycle of activity creation protection and exploitation these are the three important activities one has to practice and as i referred the developed nations developed societies developed organizations or sometimes even the developed individuals they could follow it with great commitment they create they protect their creations by way of ip intellectual property and they try to exploit them that is how they make huge profits they keep doing this activity in a regular fashion unfortunately if you look into our practices indian practices we are very very efficient in this part we create so many things we have so much of the knowledge wisdom is there knowledge is there we have lots of levels of creativity we do it but unfortunately after creating we we do not protect them properly because hardly we have some awareness on this part so therefore we create keep creating keep creating keep creating more and more but we are not looking into this aspect when you do not do this forget about this this will not come into picture or hardly it comes into the picture so therefore now we need to realize about the importance of protection through which we can also exploit further if we follow this activity adopt this implement this then certainly we can also give a great competition to the countries which we call them as superpowers and why is it happening in our practices to a greater extent the reason we can refer it to valley of death most of our research activities will fall in this category will fall in this category industry or the technological outcome is based on this level of works whatever brands technologies products that we are seeing today in the market are an outcome of the contributions of this level not just of this level and that is the reason why whenever you go into the market most of the brands most of the technologies you find are foreign brands foreign technologies because many of our work stop here so therefore if your technology readiness level the work can be referred to 
technology readiness level if your work is around technology level of 1 to 3 it is a discovery level work and hardly you can publish if it is between 4 to 5 yes it is feasible to take it further if it is around 6 to 7 practically it can be proven or proved then if you go to higher level yes it has got a large scale applicability and once you reach to tra level 9 and above yes your product can go into the market this is how we need to design our research practices so as to bring our ideas to the marketplace and unfortunately as i mentioned in india this gap is very deeper of course this gap is there at every sector and every place but in our practices this gap is much more deeper and deeper and that is how we are unable to tackle how to overcome this it is by maximization of the performance efficiency and reliability if you maximize these three certainly we can fulfill this gap and here it can be pictorially depicted academia goes with this industry needs this unless you do this none of your ideas none of your research works are going to come into the market in the form of a product or in the form of a technology so our duty is to fulfill this debt valley why why this debt valley is so deeper in indian practices we believe most of the academic and r and d institutes work work culture would be with reference to knowledge for knowledge sake we create more and more knowledge for the benefit of improving our existing knowledge whereas industry goes with management of knowledge for profit two are different directions but unless you create knowledge industry cannot manage this knowledge so therefore we need to create the knowledge in such a manner that it should open up the possibilities of industry collaborations so once these two sectors work hand in hand certainly we can do wonders just take the example of development of mobile phone someone like us got an idea of creating a mobile phone when you just get an idea will it be possible to bring the mobile phone tomorrow into the market no because you just got an idea unless you convert the idea into a workable idea you cannot see anything in the market so therefore you need to convert that into proof of concept then need to make a prototype then to scale it up then bring it to the commercial production and then finally you can bring your product into the market so all these stages of works need to be performed unless you see your idea into the market in the form of a product or a technology but as i mentioned earlier also typically most of the technological works at r and d labs will stop at this stage generate ideas develop proof of concept stop there start with new idea do this stop there again start with new idea so we repeat the cycle of activities only at these two or three stages we don't even think of their further progress but it needs unless you do this nothing is going to change and for doing this you need proper resources in the form of money time people and many others so therefore now having discussed about what is technology innovation how one need to perform uh, towards this direction let us look into why ip why is it so important see this survey yellow one is representing advanced economies the other one is rest of the world hardly 10 to 15 countries are referred as advanced economies right if you look into the population they are very small in number we are very huge i say we because we are also part of this rest of the world gdp wise though they are very small their gdp is much higher than ours if you look into publications yeah there are more there they have huge amounts of publications but ours is marginal if you look into patents or intellectual property 
hardly we find any numbers here so therefore the entire technological domain of the world is dominated or controlled by these few advanced economies and we need time has come for us to realize inventions are always incomplete without a patent grant an invention without a patent is same as treasure without security anyone can steal it anyone can claim it so we need to be careful and if you look into the publication side india stands at number 3 good but who are at number 1 and 2 china and us and what is the percentage share again they are very huge we are very small countries at 4 5 6 are very closer to us they can cross us at any time but we cannot cross these two okay we need to realize again and if you look into the patents or other types of intellectual properties i made a comparison of 2012 versus 2021 ip rights in force means the active intellectual properties of that period in 2012 there were about 8.6 million of patents but by 21 the number went on to 16.5 million double the numbers within a decade trademarks 23 million and 73 million two time three multiplied by three times okay double the numbers or triple the numbers so this is how huge numbers of ips are being contributed worldwide and if you want to know the total number of ips filed in a particular year again i brought you 2012 versus 21 in 2012 in that particular year 2.35 million of patents were filed across the world by 2021 the number went on to 3.4 million trademarks 6.58 million and 18.1 million triple the numbers within a decade likewise each kind of ip is seeing a major growth year to year decade to decade good and these are five countries which are dominating the entire globe by way of patents china us japan korea and europe these five countries are controlling the entire world that is how i had shown you by way of publications by way of patents by way of technologies only few countries are dominating the entire world if you want to know the numbers again i brought you 2012 versus 21 china in 2012 it used to get around 6.5 million pay 5 uh, 6.5 lakhs patents per year by 2021 the number gone to 15 lakhs 6.5 lakhs to 15 lakhs in about 10 years what about india then in 2012 we were filing 43 or 44000 patents by 2021 61000 45 and 61 hardly 15000 difference 15 or 16000 increment that means our progress is very very nominal in comparison to the progress made by the countries like china and if you wish to know the state wise contributions the number goes like this tamil nadu maharashtra uttar pradesh likewise state individual states are filing with these many number of patent applications in a year of course majority of you might be from tamil nadu you might be feeling happy that yes sir our tamil nadu stands at stands number 1 in terms of patent filings in our country yes appreciate congratulate but it is not a happy indication the reason is i think population of tamil nadu would be at least 5 crores or more 5 crore people hardly filing 5000 patents and if you compare this with assam or jharkhand or odisha or kerala you might appear good but no not even a single state in india is really appreciable in terms of their contributions towards ip whether it is 150 or 5000 both are not really good they are too poor you are poor that's all so therefore we need to improve upon i this is a famous uh line these are the famous lines by swami vivekananda we have great knowledge and wisdom but unless we put them into practice no much advantage is going to happen so therefore we need to try to convert our knowledge into useful applications and from now very quickly we will look into some aspects of ipr what is called ip why it is so important ip by definition is 
creations of the mind such as inventions literary works artistic works symbols names images designs that are used in commerce this is a short definition given by world intellectual property organization because we call it as a property intellectual property it is a property right like any other properties it can be sold it can be bought it can be leased or rented it can pass under will it can also be assigned but it has got some time limitation all other kinds of properties can be enjoyable as long as you keep them now you are enjoying before you your earlier generations have enjoyed after you your next generations will enjoy but intellectual property is not like that intellectual property rights are limited time enjoyment intellectual property rights are limited time enjoyment after the time period is over every, every, anyone can enjoy it but anyone can use it anyone can exploit it so here is the classification of different types of ips copyrights and industrial property in broader sense again industrial property depends on information as well as innovation trademarks and geographical indications goes under information whereas patents trade secrets and industrial designs goes under innovation if you have contributed to anything under innovation you can get any of these three on the left hand side i tried to show you the different types of ips with an example and here is the evolution of ip as i told intellectual property is nothing but creations of the mind what do you create from the mind you can create thoughts you can create ideas thoughts and ideas are like one and the same so therefore idea leading to expression you may get a copyright if your idea results into invention or innovation you may get a patent if your idea results into quality and identity if it reflects the quality and identity you may get a trademark idea resulting into appearance you may get a design and idea keep it secret do some business make some profit you may call it as a trade secret and as i told all all the time intellectual rights are enjoyable for limited period so patents for 20 years trademarks designs and geographical indications for 10 years initially they can be renewable whereas patents non renewable then copyrights lifetime of the author plus 60 years and other two like plant protection and integrated circuits are also there anywhere between 15 years for plant protection 15 to 18 years and integrated circuits for about 10 years and from here very quickly we'll see some examples of the different types of ips taking them individually trademark is a name or a sign or a logo or a symbol which is used to distinguish the identity the goods or the services of one of others okay it can be a word line some number letter picture emblem colors combination shapes graphic representation any of these things see these are the examples of trademarks yahoo now we are attending this meeting through google meet google is a trademark again so few more examples of the trademarks for the products or the services that we do come across in our day to day life starting from the toothbrush to the toothpaste mobile phone mcdonald mercedes benz like this all these are the examples of trademarks at the same time ip is also playing some role some significant role in the kind of deceptive practices that we come across in the market all these are the original brands these are the deceptive brands i think there are about four types of deceptive misleading brands in the market that are available only one is original other three or four are deceptive brands so one need to be very very careful then coming to the copyright is a legal term describing rights given to the creators for their literary and artistic works always this kind of symbol will be appearing L copyright can be any for any of these things literary works audio materials dramatic works artistic works at computer programs databases newspapers photographs speeches novels all these things can go under copyrights here are the examples like cartoon cartoons paintings sculptures poster of a movie cinematographic works musical compositions brochures can go as copyrights and then comes gi i think tamil nadu used to be the state with highest number of gis in india until recently but now kerala is the state with highest number of gis in our country followed by tamil nadu gi office is present at chennai name or sign used on the goods coming from a specific place and where the characteristics of those goods are attributed to that place darjeeling tea mysore silk mahabalesh strawberry darwad peda nagpur oranges likewise tirunelveli halwa 
yes all these are the examples of even madurai malligi mysore malligi madurai saugandi all these are the examples of geographical indications so any of these products agriculture product food stuff wine and spirit drink handicraft clothing or any other industrial product can go as gi then comes industrial design idea leading to appearance whatever appearance whatever is appearing to you on the screen the things that are appealing to your eyes can be protected as industrial design in this type of ip technical aspects are not protected all these are consumer products pharmaceutical products textile jewelry all these are the examples of industrial designs then the secrets coca cola formula is a secret since 1886 so likewise kfc original recipe is a secret and spray lubricant is a secret google page rank algorithm is also a secret so as on today no one knows it except for one or two people who have invented them then comes the patent patent is a contract between the government and the inventor for which the government gives the right to the inventor to stop others if you have the patent you can stop others from using selling or exploiting your invention in simple terms it is called as a techno legal document technical part as well as legal part will be there in the document it's a conditional grant it is always granted to the owner or the assignee and here are few examples of the patented inventions and whatever examples you find here now today we are enjoying the advanced versions of all these earlier inventions these are the very first level inventions now we are enjoying the advanced versions and now i brought you something called ip all in one ip all in one till now we have seen different types of ip starting from the trademark copyright industrial design trade secret geographical indication and patents so therefore let us by taking this example let us see how many types of ips are associated with this the body of the washing machine is protected as industrial design user manual is protected by copyright the name and logo of the company this is a bosch company's washing machine you have lg you have samsung you have iwb so many right so name of the company and logo goes as trademarks and the technical features like engine drum their technical functioning uh, semi automatic is there automatic is there top load is there front load is there so all these are the technical features they are protected as patents tomorrow who knows something side load bottom load diagonal load washing machines may also come yes quite possible i please uh, be aware that ip is not a new practice many of us might feel that since government is saying or nowadays people are talking about ip institutions are preferring about this it might be a new practice a recent practice the answer, my answer is no somewhere in 500 bc itself greeks used to grant protection to their inventions that means it is as old as to that of alexander purushottam war it is not a new practice maybe the terminologies that we are using might be new from here i'll quickly i'll show you some examples related to the invention innovations and patents this used to be the case once upon a time but now sensor based stumps have come the person behind this invention or innovation is he single person could come up with sensor based cricket stumps it is the patent that he filed now he controls the entire cricket market so this is the advantage of having an ip look at these examples snuggly baby carrier pedal powered washing machine by ramajos from kerala barbie doll all these are the examples of patented inventions if you look into this example try to recollect the days of first freedom fight jansi ki rani lakshmi bai used to carry her baby in the lap and she fought with the britishers right but this technology is not a indian our, our people could not get advantage of their ideas or their thoughts but now she got she filed a patent she got the advantage and she could emerge as one of the richest person ring pull can of coca cola is also a patented invention inventor used to get 148000 uk pounds on royalty per day look into this a welder from trichy i think i think he is from trichy or some other part of tamil nadu i think from trichy only if i am not wrong 
so he has invented a remote control toilet bed system for his innovation he got a national innovation prize from president of india and he has patented this making biochar from human waste they filed patents now they are marketing their products in more than 5 6 countries and then see to contribute to innovations to get an ip no age bar no education no qualification is very much required if you are really committed you can contribute she is a grand old mother a grandmother she developed a fidget spinner to engage her granddaughter someone like her suggested her to take a patent she filed the patent in european patent office she patent was granted but unfortunately she could not pay euro 310 towards annual maintenance because of that her patent got abandoned once it came into the open domain every industry started working on it and today this is the worth of spinning toy industry in earlier cases i had shown you how people could become rich by intellectual property here it is an example she could not even make a single rupee out of her intellectual property so both both kind of examples are there so one need to be intelligent enough and these are some works being an organic chemist we always try to develop new molecules for various biological applications we develop the molecules take the help of biology people and try to wherever there is a possibility try to protect them in the form of patents and luckily one of our work this work after filing patents we could able to license it to the sun pharma after 5 years these are the front pages of the patents from our works and these are few more works of course mostly it is chemistry and biology and then these are the patents for the other works and this is another work wherein as i mentioned always we need to integrate our research practices with intellectual property learnings once we can once if we once if we start doing this certainly we can do wonders so this is a research part we could also file a patent now we are negotiating with pharma industries to transfer our technology so therefore in summary we can say that it is the innovation which distinguishes between a leader and the follower everything starts with an idea an idea which is a smart idea so therefore whenever you generate thoughts whenever you generate ideas if your idea is of this category specific measurable achievable realistic and timely then certainly you should pursue it further you should protect it why to emerge as a leader this is the impact of a leader versus follower we are already here if you want to be on this side we need to contribute and this would be a scenario if you do not have ip assets big will eat small small will eat mini mini will eat micro micro will eat nano nano will eat pico being small is so dangerous but if you have ip assets if you have ip assets you can fight them you can fight you can resist whatever you wish you can face and you can stand on your own and if you see the assets of share of assets of top 500 companies globally from 1975 to 2020 their share of assets is changing from being tangible to intangible intangible means ip tangible means physical so in 1975 only 17% of their assets were ip assets by 2020 more than 90% of their assets are in the form of ip this is the power of ip so therefore ip is very very important now the time is very crucial we are in a very very crucial time like the days of 1942 do or die similar is the case now innovate or die if we innovate the world would recognize us if we don't innovate certainly the entire world may ignore us so therefore now the responsibility lies on us whether we want ourselves to be ignored or we need to be we need to be remembered it all depends on us so we need to contribute the rational is if you always do what you always did you will always get what you always got so therefore getting up getting ready to the college taking breakfast going to the college having lunch doing the assignments coming back again sleeping getting up this is a routine activity if you just keep on doing only those routine activities nothing new will happen so therefore come out of those boundaries 
try to create something new and whenever you take up a new research activity always screen the research works for their patentability before publication in scientific journals by doing this you can get a patent you can also get the publication for the same work it is like 1 plus 1 offer if you do this you can improve the numbers with respect to patents as well as you can also get publications and here is a inspiration for researchers professor robert langer he has got 1500 publications 800 patents he licensed this patent to patents to 250 companies i don't know whether he is a man or machine people like him are in thousands or lakhs in the countries like us japan korea which are developed and hardly we find some people of this category in our societies so therefore we need to take inspiration from these kind of people and that is how even the highest authorities of our country started realizing the value of innovation they did not just realize they they thought they should propagate from their side to improve our contributions and that is where jay jawan jay kisan jay vigyan were already there now one more line was added jay anusandhan anusandhan is all about innovation and knowingly or unknowingly we had been into this practice our our research orientation has been only towards making impact factor publications whether we accept or not either knowingly or unknowingly we are doing only this we need to do this but if we are only doing this that is a problem in addition to this we also need to look into the activities like india first innovation first and ip first whatever work whatever activity we take up it should add some value to our country whatever work you carry out there should be some or other innovativeness and wherever there is a possibility you should take an ip first by doing these three along with the existing practice of making publications if we can integrate these four certainly we can do wonders we can contribute more and we can find some change in our progress and in this direction csr has recently changed its logo modified its logo now csr is referred as the innovation engine of india so innovation has been the most utmost or the front line activity for csr here are some memorable interactions and then with this i thank you all for joining thank you thank you so much sir if you have any uh, queries you can take them yes on. sir there are a few questions from yes, the students yes. i'll ask them to you So, we'll say the student comments. Yes, yes, I'm here. If there are any queries, we can take them up. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Tell me. Sir, I have a question. Yes, yes, please. The session was informative, and I have a question, sir. Please go ahead. Wow, uh, what are the measures that government has taken to overcome the value of death, sir? What are the measures that government has taken to overcome the value of death, sir? See, it, uh, what are the measures in the sense uh, we need to realize that whenever we take up a research activity, we should work towards it with an objective of bringing it to the market, developing some new works, making a prototype. and making the report and starting with another work is not sufficient we need to take it to the largest extent for that we need to improve our efficiency we need to work on creating a real time model okay and we need to have enough resources and also we need to tap with industries so by by looking into these four aspects certainly we can cross the cross that valley of death hope i have answered
Yes, if there are any further queries, we can take them up. Oh. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And Soumya, uh, yes. the section was very informative, sir. I have another question. Yes, yes, go ahead. Uh, what is an advantage to get an uh, GI tag, sir? Advantage of getting a GI tag is see, uh, you can you can increase your market share. The brand of your product will be increased, and you can your brand can go global, right? So all these are the advantages. Mainly, it is a business advantage for your product, for the global entry or even the national entry also. Any other questions, participants? Participants, do you have any other questions? You can even type your questions in the chat box. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yes, yes, please. please. Like uh, uh, you spoke about the like in the slide, you mentioned about the research and development activities of the government and academics, mm -hmm. and then on the other side, industry. Yes. And the student also uh, she asked a question like, what are the measures the government is taking to overcome? But okay. as an academic community, as faculty, researchers, and students, mm -hmm. how is it that we can contribute to overcome? Like our part, we are implementing NEP, we have been asked to publish research papers, so we are doing it to an extent. Right. But how is it that we can focus exactly on oh. uh, closing that value of that? Yes, yes. See, the, uh, uh, the current practice is we take up research and we try to publish them. And we, 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 we may expect uh, industries or uh, others who are interested should look into those. If they are interested, they may come to us. Right. So this is the current practice. But what I feel is while you take up the research activity, you need to identify whether your research can go into the marketplace or not, or whether it will be suitable to the uh, suitable to the market or not. If so, try to attract some industry. I try to collaborate with industry, develop a joint activity as, as and when you complete your part, they should take that work and carry it forward for its commercial exploitation. So this has to be practiced. Of course, uh, implementation of this may not be that easy because in the countries like US and others, they have a technology transfer offices at their university campuses where there the research, both in terms of basic research and industrial research happens at the same place. But unfortunately in India, academic institutes and universities will carry out academic research, whereas the industrial research part would be taken care by specific uh, research institutes like CSIR or ICMR or others. And there is no proper uh, proper coordination between the academic institutes or research institutes or even industry. Unless we build this uh, integration, it is not going to be so easy. So therefore, for you as an academic institute, try to find an industry partner who can be part of your research activity so as to explore it further. I think this is the very first uh, point to be looked into. Thank you, sir. So, uh, like uh, one more uh, oh. suggestion from you, sir. Like uh, we are, uh, like we have students from UG and PG, and they can we cannot expect them to take up very big uh, research projects and work on it. Or right. when we approach an industry, they really expect something big. Uh, uh, they have to be, it should yes. be profitable to them. Yes. So instead, uh, sometimes we see very small uh, research, very trivial researches lead to very big, like you have shown in many of the innovations. Right. right. So yeah. how can uh, we can we have some mentors or someone who can help us to focus on such small yes, level researches, which UG students can do, with True. This, not with this, not by investing too much of money. Right. Right. I think. Uh... In India, this kind of uh, practice is at a very, very initial stage. Slowly, even government is also thinking of bringing in uh, bringing industries into academic practices. Unless uh, uh, unless industry comes into picture or the technology seeker come, comes into picture, I think there may not be much change that is going to happen. And with respect to the UG students, what you can do is uh, whenever there uh, whenever you find uh, some potential ideas maybe you can you can you can encourage them uh, to 
pitch them in many of the open calls they can pitch in there or you can develop a report and submit it to atal innovation mission or even maybe the state governments so every state government has, is having some snt councils or innovation councils you can submit there even nrdc tifac they also try to support and one more thing national innovation foundation it also supports to a reasonably good extent so through these four or five different agencies you can uh, you can try to get some mentors and try to get some support so that uh, those ideas or those initial works can be further explored so this is my answer right away yes sir thank you sir you have answered more than like so we will try out all the measures which you have told us participants are there any other questions or shall we wind up the session can we wind up sir yes yes if there are no queries we can yeah. thank you so much sir for opening the young minds and explaining to them the importance of innovation and also giving us inspiring case studies for innovative research and also valuable suggestion for uh, institutions like us who are not uh, in a position to take up huge projects but still you gave us idea like how we can start from our baby infant level so we hope this festival which you are commemorating for the month will ignite more minds and will help to place india at the top level in innovation thank you so much sir for being a part of our uh, in college activity and thank you all for joining the session thank you, thank you Catherine. Sir. thank you very much and uh, wish you all the very best thank you all thank you so much sir. i'm just leaving okay Sure, sir. Thank you, sir.